essentially we, we started up here, we walked down around like this, looped back up and back to the car. So we were limited to essentially these portions of these two quadrants. Uh, we found uh, nine new localities. Uh, these were all plant localities. We didn't find any vertebrates, although that is not surprising given the uh, short field survey and the nature of the formation. The uh, terrain out there, if you haven't seen it, is rather rugged uh, and is resistant to covering great distance. It, it resists having great distances covered over it, uh, certainly by humans. The deer didn't seem to have any problem getting up and down those bluffs, but uh, uh, so we didn't, we weren't able to cover a great deal of land, but considering the amount of land we covered, we found an awful lot of plant material. Uh, fossil wood and plant debris is abundant. Fossil leaves are abundant. And literature, we did a literature review and locality uh, review. There are 33 known localities in the area, and these uh, include plant and vertebrate localities. Uh, they're all early Paleocene, just after the patient tertiary boundary. Uh, the plants, we rarely found just a single plant alone. It was generally uh, abundant material. Uh, the exception to that was uh, we would find individual logs, and some of these logs were quite large, and that, those were also localities. Uh, so yes, there is obviously, based on the, the known literature, the localities that are known in the area, and the number of localities we found out there, this uh, and the known uh, sort of uh, paleontological sensitivity of the Denver formation throughout the Denver Basin, this is classed by the BLM as a class five. That is very high potential for fossil resources. And our recommendations from this are, we, we strongly recommend a full stratigraphic paleontological survey of the area which would ultimately result in uh, recommendations for development. What's a full paleontological well, it would, it survey? Would, How long is that? That would, uh, it depends on a lot of factors, uh, and it's something that would have to be developed by whatever paleontologists would be undertaking it. But it would involve uh, pretty much 100% uh, pedestrian survey of the entire area, uh, doing stratigraphic work to uh, be able to tie any localities discovered into a stratigraphic column of the area that could relate to the rest of the Denver Formation. Um, I'll, I'll be with you in one second. Um, and uh, then, of course, collecting any fossils. Uh, those fossils would be curated. This would be, a, a, it would be virtually essential that whatever paleontologists worked on this, that they work in conjunction with uh, researchers at DMNS and the University of Colorado uh, Museum because there's active research in the Denver Basin uh, by both students and faculty, uh, NSF funded um, research. So you would want to work in conjunction with them. <coughs> and lastly, uh, an important aspect here is that it's not well known where the Cretaceous Tertiary Boundary is in Coral Bluffs because there hasn't been much access to it over the years, but uh, it, it appears that it's probably somewhere near the base and uh, any research, any sort of survey would want to do the necessary research to identify that boundary. Yeah. Well, was it your recommendation that the county postpone higher, uh, beginning trail design until an, an in-depth study is done? We just recommended, uh, we strongly recommend that a study be done prior to any development. Prior to development? Prior to development, yes. Uh, what not to put an exact price on doing that full study, but what would be a range of expected costs for that? I don't think I can answer that. Um, I just don't know. It's We would expect that uh, based on the work that we've done in other Eocene formations uh, around the western U.S., uh, the given area, the topography, uh, we expect it would be uh, somewhere between one to two weeks uh, with four people. Uh, to do the survey, but again, we, this is off the top of my head, so I, I know you want hard and clear facts, no, but no. I can't, I, uh, I can't give those. I mean, a range. You know, uh, well, that's, kind, range. that's kind of a minimum. Uh, again, it all depends on how many localities you find uh, and um, how, how what what you discover once you're out there, um, and then in, in addition to that, you would need uh, time to write the reports and uh, to 
prepare any fossils and curate fossils and what have you. So, because Paul was working on the report that said there was a, a, a four-year study, but I don't know what what uh, level that's at right now. Um, so I don't I don't actually have an answer. Well, what's that, your experience with uh, if you run into well, a place where well, the National Science Foundation uh, uh, is doing a four-year study? Uh, again, the National Science Foundation is not doing the study. They they funded, yeah, they funded to, uh, yeah, to do right. it. Sure. And uh, research is often ongoing. Uh, I know certainly that there are people at the Denver Museum who's, who I suspect will continue to do research on the Denver Formation for most of their career. Uh, so you could see people doing this research in, in the Denver area, in the Denver Formation for the next 20 or 30 years. Uh, specific research projects often run anywhere between a year and uh, three or four years. If it's a, if it's a large uh, collaborative research project with uh, multiple institutions and multiple researchers and graduate students doing graduate work level on it, it may extend for uh, six or eight years for any specific funded project. Yeah? Are there other areas like this? Is this really there, unique? there are a number of uh, areas in the Denver Basin that have exposures of the Denver Formation, Coral Bluffs, and uh, also I think Jimmy Creek just to the uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Camp Creek, just to the uh, west. west and slightly north. Uh, they have w one of the thickest exposures of continuous exposures of Denver formation anywhere in the basin. So it is a really uh, great spot for people working on the Denver formation. It's an important sequence for sure. And uh, it has the, uh, supposedly has the Cretaceous tertiary boundary, and there's, there's not a lot of those exposures around either. 